to another good trail, Skyline. Okay. But it's it's so packed right now. Yeah. But oh, is it? It's a really cool. You can go up the camp mirror.
Hello. Hi. Oh, hi. Hello. <laughs> All three of you, hello! Hello! <laughs> this is such a nice surprise, thank you. <laughs> Welcome. Today's video is brought to you by Storyblocks. They have a massive library of video clips and content just waiting to level up your next project. Their affordable subscription helps you create more with unlimited downloads of their over 1 million plus royalty-free asset library. The more you use Storyblocks, the more you realize how valuable it is. I'm able to download and use clips that would be nearly impossible to get. Dog running with a stick. This little pup hiking through leaves. A man and his dog enjoying coffee. This dapper fellow hiking with the sun behind him. Oh, he's so cute. A golden retriever just enjoying this waterfall. Man, I really want to hike with a dog. Visit storyblocks.com slash Craig Adams or visit the link in the description below to check them out. Storyblocks has my back. And if you want to support me, support my sponsors. They help me create more videos and go on more trips. So thank you, Storyblocks. Okay, welcome back. I am in Virginia. And that was hiking 40 miles alone in the Goat Rocks Wilderness Loop area of Washington, Washington. I was recommended this trail because it's got amazing views of three volcanoes, Adams, St. Helens, and Rainier. And it's also partly on the PCT, which if you know, I was supposed to hike this year, got postponed because of COVID, and I do plan to hike it in the future, which makes me not want to spoil it too much. I definitely feel like something was spoiled on this hike because I ran into a lot of PCT hikers, and I don't want to see the best parts of it until I hike the full thing, hopefully next year, 2021. But yeah, there were a lot of people out there for a good reason. It's beautiful, the wildflowers, the volcanoes, uh, the alpine views once you get up out of the woods. It was beautiful. To get to the trailhead, I drove out to Packwood, Washington, which is the last big town. It's like a small touristy town, so big in a sense with a lot of people with good coffee, restaurants, uh, lodges, any supplies you might need for the hike, you can get them here. It's pretty busy just because it's in the foothills of the Rainier National Park. Rainier's right there, and it's like the last stop before wilderness. I took a really long, like an hour long ride on a dirt road through the woods to Walput Lake Campground. Campground was full, so there was zero chance of me sleeping there. So I just packed my stuff and then headed out in the afternoon around like 3 p.m. It was a very simple walk up self issue permit. I'm actually starting to really like starting a hike in the afternoon, especially when it's low, dense forest. I like that there's direct sunlight coming in. It's just better than the crack of dawn. I don't know why people expect that to just like be the time that you always start a hike. It doesn't have to. I guess for filmmaking purposes, I might start hikes later from now on. And I would like to mention that I got the Northwest Forest Pass at the Enchantments hike that I did for parking. And I was able to just hang that on my mirror and just park my car for free, even though I paid $30 for the annual pass. Uh, that worked out really well. I knew this hike would only be 40 miles, uh, two nights, three days at the most, so I didn't pack too much, uh, especially food. I ate everything on this hike and came off the trail with nothing, so I feel like it was the perfect amount to pack. I had two freeze-dried meals, instant potatoes, meal to go, two oatmeal, two nut butters, an orange, an apple, and one instant ramen. There was more than enough water flowing throughout this entire hike, so I only brought my one liter be free filter water bottle. And everything that I brought hiking and filmmaking wise is linked and listed in the description down below so you can check that to answer any questions that you have. So starting this hike was in the forest, but eventually you come out and you start to have views. And the first time that you see Mount Adams, it is like right there and beautiful. Every time you see a volcano, it's just stunning. The slope up, the snow at the top, and it just stands out. It's like, reminds me of Mount Fuji and 
Kilimanjaro, just volcanoes are awesome in general. And there were so many wildflowers, all different colors, especially on the grassy, sunny slopes of the side of the trail. I went about 12 miles with 3,000 feet elevation gain in about four hours for this late half a day first hike. The next morning, I definitely hit the snooze a couple of times because every time I poked my head out, I saw this blanket of fog, morning mist, and I was in no rush and shooting a video, so I wanted to start my hike, my day, when the clouds and the mist was breaking, which happened around 9 a.m. And as the sun starts to burn that off and you steadily climb and gain elevation, the views are just constant. Uh, 360 of alpine, uh, rolling hills, some snow, uh, some pine trees every so often, but it is just amazing up there. There were a lot of people, and to all of the subscribers who stopped to say hi, it's so nice to get to talk to someone and meet y'all in person on the trail, so thank you for saying hi. You yeah, are. I wasn't expecting Craig on <laughs> goat rock section. <laughs> it's always funny when I'm just up here by myself and then someone yells, Craig, in the distance. <laughs> Eventually I made my way to the summit of the hike, which was Old Snowy Mountain. It was a very small top, but I made some friends and chatted with some people up there, uh, and then made my way down to something called Knife's Edge, which was a very thin uh, ridge, and you just hike right along the top. I went out there, took my time, and then eventually turned back and headed to Goat Lake. This place was packed, a lot of tents, a lot of dogs, a lot of people, and it was also so windy. And the lake was frozen up there, so that's always interesting to see dead of summer, just like a frozen lake. This day two was my main day of hiking, but I definitely took my time and uh, didn't hike too much compared to other full days that I did. I only did 17 miles with 4,000 feet elevation gain in about seven hours. The pass that I camped at that night got super windy and it was the worst gusts in my tent that I've ever felt and I actually woke up at three o'clock to my tent completely folding over on top of me. I got up just to make sure that nothing would completely fail. I didn't want the thing to blow away. I made sure that the stakes were in. I'm super glad I had the rain fly that night. Um, but I kind of just embraced the fact that it was folding on top of me. It wasn't the end of the world. There were some extra straps that I could have put on the poles to make them hold together with the rain fly better. I could have done that. And then I also could have positioned my tent so that it was kind of splitting the wind instead of flat against the wind. So I'm learning more about how windy it could get at night and also the correct way to uh, fight the wind with this tent. I woke up and packed up really quickly because the wind was still going and headed out and did about 11 miles with 1,000 feet elevation gain in only four hours. So it was a quick exit. I looped back to my car, not before I was ambushed by three adorable, identical little dogs. There was like a group of four or five uh, horseback riders and these three little dogs were just like scouting in front of the pack and it was adorable to run into them. You know how much I love dogs. Ah, it was like the last thing I saw before I stopped the hike and it was just perfect. So if you wanna see the route that I took, you can check the description below for an all trails map. I used the all trails app on my phone for the entire hike and every hike that I do. In airplane mode, you still have the GPS location so you can see where you are following it on the map the entire time. I track all of my stats and it just keeps me on trail. It's very convenient and easy to use. And I made a custom map, so I've got notes and photos. Uh, so make sure to check that out and you can download it and follow it if you ever do this trail yourself. And if you do, I'm curious to know how you like it. Leave a comment. If you shoot a video, that's even better. Uh, I am very curious to know who goes on these hikes after I shoot a video. So let me know about that. Oh, always nice to hear. And a huge thank you to the sponsor of this video, my YouTube channel members, people who have pledged their support and are donating and helping me to make more videos like this. If you want to become a member, you can click the join button on the channel homepage on desktop and uh, go from there. But until then, thank you so much for watching. Take care. I feel great. Look at all this red. Very pretty out here. Hello? First view. Just past two hikers with dogs. Mount Adams. Jesus. Oh, they smell so good. Day two. Rocks. I hate to ask, but can I get a picture of you walking by? Yeah, we can totally. Get over here. Hi. 
Aha. Pretty hungry. Flowers. I'd like to build a campfire. I'm seriously gonna have so much trouble picking the thumbnail. I picked this for you. So cool. Day three. Ah! And you're on YouTube?